India Bharat, officially the Republic of India, is a country in South Asia. It is the seventh largest country by area, the second most populous country, and the most populous democracy in the world. Bounded by the Indian Ocean on the south, the Arabian Sea on the southwest, and the Bay of Bengal on the southeast, it shares land borders with Pakistan to the west, China, Nepal, and Bhutan to the north, and Bangladesh and Myanmar to the east. In the Indian Ocean, India is in the vicinity of Sri Lanka and the Maldives, its Andaman and Nicobar Islands share a maritime border with Thailand and Indonesia. Modern humans arrived on the Indian subcontinent from Africa no later than 55,000 years ago. Their long occupation, initially in varying forms of isolation as hunter-gatherers, has made the region highly diverse, second only to Africa in human genetic diversity. Settled life emerged on the subcontinent in the western margins of the Indus River Basin 9,000 years ago, evolving gradually into the Indus Valley civilization of the 3rd millennium BCE. By 1200 BCE, an archaic form of Sanskrit, an Indo-European language, had diffused into India from the northwest, unfolding as the language of the Rigveda, and recording the dawning of Hinduism in India. The Dravidian languages of India were supplanted in the northern regions. By 400 BCE, stratification and exclusion by caste had emerged within Hinduism, and Buddhism and Jainism had arisen, proclaiming social orders unlinked to heredity. Early political consolidations gave rise to the loose-knit Maurya and Gupta empires based in the Ganges Basin. Their collective era was suffused with wide-ranging creativity but also marked by the declining status of women, and the incorporation of untouchability into an organized system of belief. In South India, the Middle Kingdoms exported Dravidian languages scripts and religious cultures to the kingdoms of Southeast Asia. In the early medieval era, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, and Zoroastrianism put down roots on India's southern and western coasts. Armies from Central Asia intermittently overran India's plains, eventually establishing the Delhi Sultanate, and drawing northern India into the cosmopolitan networks of medieval Islam. In the 15th century, the Vijayanagara Empire Sri Krishnadevaraya created a long-lasting composite Hindu culture in South India. In Punjab, Sikhism emerged, rejecting institutionalized religion. The Mughal Empire, in 1526, ushered in two centuries of relative peace, leaving a legacy of luminous architecture. Gradually expanding the rule of the British East India Company followed, turning India into a colonial economy, but also consolidating its sovereignty. British rule began in 1858. The rights promised to Indians were granted slowly, but technological changes were introduced, and ideas of education, modernity and public life took root. A pioneering and influential nationalist movement emerged, which was noted for non-violent resistance and led India to its independence in 1947. India as a secular federal republic governed in a democratic parliamentary system. It is a pluralistic, multilingual and multi-ethnic society. India's population grew from 361 million in 1951 to 1,211 million in 2011. At the same time, its nominal per capita income increased from US$64 annually to US$1,498, and its literacy rate from 16.6% .6 to 74%. From being a comparatively destitute country in 1951, India has become a fast-growing major economy, a hub for information technology services, with an expanding middle class. It has a space program that includes several planned or completed extraterrestrial missions. Indian movies, music, and spiritual teachings play an increasing role in global culture. India has substantially reduced its rate of poverty, though at the cost of increasing economic inequality. India is considered a great power and nuclear weapons state, which ranks high in military expenditure. It has disputes over Kashmir with its neighbors, Pakistan and China, unresolved since the mid-20th century. Among the socio-economic challenges, India's faces are gender inequality, child malnutrition, and rising levels of air pollution. India's land is megadiverse, with four biodiversity hotspots. Its forest cover comprises 21.4% of its area. India's wildlife, which has traditionally been viewed with tolerance in India's culture, is supported among these forests, and elsewhere, in protected habitats. 
Etymology According to the Oxford English Dictionary, 3rd edition 2009, the name India is derived from Classical Latin India, a reference to South Asia and an uncertain region to its east, and in turn, derived successively from Hellenistic Greek India Ancient Greek Indus, Old Persian Hindus, an eastern province of the Achaemenid Empire, and ultimately its cognate, the Sanskrit Sindhu, or river, but especially the Indus River and, by implication, its well-settled southern basin. The ancient Greeks referred to the Indians as Indoi, which translates as, the people of the Indus. The term Bharat mentioned in both Indian epic poetry and the constitution of India is used in its variations by many Indian languages. A modern rendering of the historical name Bharatavarsha, which applied originally to a region of the Gangetic Valley, Bharat gained increased currency from the mid-19th century as a native name for India. History. By 55,000 years ago, the first modern humans, or Homo sapiens, had arrived on the Indian subcontinent from Africa, where they had earlier evolved. The earliest known modern human remains in South Asia date to about 30,000 years ago. After 6500 BCE, evidence for the domestication of food crops and animals, construction of permanent structures, and storage of agricultural surplus appeared in Mergar and other sites in what is now Baluchistan. These gradually developed into the Indus Valley Civilization, the first urban culture in South Asia, which flourished during 2500-1900 BCE in what is now Pakistan and Western India. Centered around cities such as Mohenjo-Daro, Harappa, Dolavira, and Kalibangan, and relying on varied forms of subsistence, the civilization engaged robustly in crafts production and wide-ranging trade. During the period 2000 to 500 BCE, many regions of the subcontinent transitioned from the Chalcolithic cultures to the Iron Age ones. The Vedas, the oldest scriptures associated with Hinduism, were composed during this period, and historians have analyzed these to posit a Vedic culture in the Punjab region and the upper Gangetic plain. Most historians also consider this period to have encompassed several waves of Indo-Aryan migration into the subcontinent from the northwest. The caste system, which created a hierarchy of priests, warriors, and free peasants, but which excluded indigenous peoples by labeling their occupations impure, arose during this period. On the Deccan Plateau, archaeological evidence from this period suggests the existence of a chiefdom stage of political organization. In South India, a progression to sedentary life is indicated by the large number of megalithic monuments dating from this period, as well as by nearby traces of agriculture, irrigation tanks, and craft traditions. In the late Vedic period, around the 6th century BCE, the small states and chiefdoms of the Ganges Plain and the northwestern regions had consolidated into 16 major oligarchies and monarchies that were known as the Mahajanapadas. The emerging urbanization gave rise to non-Vedic religious movements, two of which became independent religions. Jainism came into prominence during the life of its exemplar, Mahavira. Buddhism, based on the teachings of Gautama Buddha, attracted followers from all social classes excepting the middle class, chronicling the life of the Buddha was central to the beginnings of recorded history in India. In an age of increasing urban wealth, both religions held up renunciation as an ideal, and both established long-lasting monastic traditions. Politically, by the 3rd century BCE, the Kingdom of Magadha had annexed or reduced other states to emerge as the Mauryan Empire. The empire was once thought to have controlled most of the subcontinent except the far south, but its core regions are now thought to have been separated by large autonomous areas. The Mauryan kings are known as much for their empire-building and determined management of public life as for Ashoka's renunciation of militarism and far-flung advocacy of the Buddhist Dhamma. The Sangam literature of the Tamil language reveals that, between 200 BCE and 200 CE, the southern peninsula was ruled by the Cheras, the Cholas, and the Pandyas, dynasties that traded extensively with the Roman Empire and with West and Southeast Asia. In North India, Hinduism asserted patriarchal control within the family, leading to increased subordination of women. By the 4th and 5th centuries, the Gupta Empire had created a complex system of administration and taxation in the Greater Ganges Plain that became a model for later Indian kingdoms. Under the Guptas, a renewed Hinduism based on devotion, rather than the management of ritual, began to assert itself. This renewal was reflected in a flowering of sculpture and architecture, which found patrons among an urban elite. 
Classical Sanskrit literature flowered as well, and Indian science, astronomy, medicine, and mathematics made significant advances. Medieval India The Indian Early Medieval Age 600 CE to 1200 CE, is defined by regional kingdoms and cultural diversity. When Harsha of Kanauj, who ruled much of the Indo-Gangetic plain from 606 to 647 CE, attempted to expand southwards, he was defeated by the Chalukya ruler of the Deccan. When his successor attempted to expand eastwards, he was defeated by the Pala king of Bengal. When the Chalukyas attempted to expand southwards, they were defeated by the Pallavas from farther south, who in turn were opposed by the Pandyas and the Cholas from still farther south. No ruler of this period was able to create an empire and consistently control lands much beyond his core region. During this time, pastoral peoples, whose land had been cleared to make way for the growing agricultural economy, were accommodated within caste society, as were new non-traditional ruling classes. The caste system consequently began to show regional differences. In the 6th and 7th centuries, the first devotional hymns were created in the Tamil language. They were imitated all over India and led to both the resurgence of Hinduism and the development of all modern languages of the subcontinent. Indian royalty, big and small, and the temples they patronized drew citizens in great numbers to the capital cities, which became economic hubs as well. Temple towns of various sizes began to appear everywhere as India underwent another urbanization. By the 8th and 9th centuries, the effects were felt in Southeast Asia, as South Indian culture and political systems were exported to lands that became part of modern-day Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia, and Java. Indian merchants, scholars, and sometimes armies were involved in this transmission, Southeast Asians took the initiative as well, with many sojourning in Indian seminaries and translating Buddhist and Hindu texts into their languages. After the 10th century, Muslim Central Asian nomadic clans, using swift horse cavalry and raising vast armies united by ethnicity and religion, repeatedly overran South Asia's northwestern plains, leading eventually to the establishment of the Islamic Delhi Sultanate in 1206. The Sultanate was to control much of North India and to make many forays into South India. Although at first disruptive for the Indian elites, the Sultanate largely left its vast non-Muslim subject population to its own laws and customs. By repeatedly repulsing Mongol raiders in the 13th century, the Sultanate saved India from the devastation visited on West and Central Asia, setting the scene for centuries of migration of fleeing soldiers, learned men, mystics, traders, artists, and artisans from that region into the subcontinent, thereby creating a syncretic Indo-Islamic culture in the north. The Sultanate's raiding and weakening of the regional kingdoms of South India paved the way for the indigenous Vijayanagara Empire. Embracing a strong Shaivite tradition and building upon the military technology of the Sultanate, the empire came to control much of peninsular India and was to influence South Indian society for long afterward. Early Modern India in the early 16th century, northern India, then under mainly Muslim rulers, fell again to the superior mobility and firepower of a new generation of Central Asian warriors. The resulting Mughal Empire did not stamp out the local societies it came to rule. Instead, it balanced and pacified them through new administrative practices and diverse and inclusive ruling elites, leading to more systematic, centralized, and uniform rule. Eschewing tribal bonds and Islamic identity, especially under Akbar, the Mughals united their far-flung realms through loyalty, expressed through a Persianized culture, to an emperor who had near-divine status. The Mughal state's economic policies, deriving most revenues from agriculture and mandating that taxes be paid in the well-regulated silver currency, caused peasants and artisans to enter larger markets. The relative peace maintained by the empire during much of the 17th century was a factor in India's economic expansion, resulting in greater patronage of painting, literary forms, textiles, and architecture. Newly coherent social groups in northern and western India, such as the Marathas, the Rajputs, and the Sikhs, gained military and governing ambitions during the Mughal rule, which, through collaboration or adversity, gave them both recognition and military experience. Expanding commerce during the Mughal rule gave rise to new Indian commercial and political elites along the coasts of southern and eastern India. As the empire disintegrated, many among these elites were able to seek and control their own affairs. 
By the early 18th century, with the lines between commercial and political dominance being increasingly blurred, a number of European trading companies, including the English East India Company, had established coastal outposts. The East India Company's control of the seas, greater resources, and more advanced military training and technology led it to increasingly flex its military muscle and caused it to become attractive to a portion of the Indian elite. These factors were crucial in allowing the company to gain control over the Bengal region by 1765 and sideline the other European companies. Its further access to the riches of Bengal and the subsequent increased strength and size of its army enabled it to annex or subdue most of India by the 1820s. India was then no longer exporting manufactured goods as it long had, but was instead supplying the British Empire with raw materials. Many historians consider this to be the onset of India's colonial period. By this time, with its economic power severely curtailed by the British Parliament and having effectively been made an arm of British administration, the company began more consciously to enter non-economic arenas like education, social reform, and culture. Modern India Historians consider India's modern age to have begun sometime between 1848 and 1885. The appointment in 1848 of Lord Dalhousie as Governor-General of the East India Company set the stage for changes essential to a modern state. These included the consolidation and demarcation of sovereignty, the surveillance of the population, and the education of citizens. Technological changes, among them, railways, canals, and the telegraph, were introduced not long after their introduction in Europe. However, disaffection with the company also grew during this time and set off the Indian Rebellion of 1857. Fed by diverse resentments and perceptions, including invasive British-style social reforms, harsh land taxes, and summary treatment of some rich landowners and princes, the rebellion rocked many regions of northern and central India and shook the foundations of company rule. Although the rebellion was suppressed by 1858, it led to the dissolution of the East India Company and the direct administration of India by the British government. Proclaiming a unitary state and a gradual but limited British-style parliamentary system, the new rulers also protected princes and landed gentry as a feudal safeguard against future unrest. In the decades following, public life gradually emerged all over India, leading eventually to the founding of the Indian National Congress in 1885. The rush of technology and the commercialization of agriculture in the second half of the 19th century was marked by economic setbacks, many small farmers became dependent on the whims of faraway markets. There was an increase in the number of large-scale famines, and, despite the risks of infrastructure development borne by Indian taxpayers, little industrial employment was generated for Indians. There were also salutary effects, commercial cropping, especially in the newly canneled Punjab, led to increased food production for internal consumption. The railway network provided critical famine relief, notably reduced the cost of moving goods, and helped the nascent Indian-owned industry. After World War I, in which approximately one million Indians served, a new period began. It was marked by British reforms but also repressive legislations, by more strident Indian calls for self-rule, and by the beginnings of a non-violent movement of non-cooperation, of which Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi would become the leader and enduring symbol. During the 1930s, slow legislative reform was enacted by the British, the Indian National Congress won victories in the resulting elections. The next decade was beset with crises, Indian participation in World War II, the Congress's final push for non-cooperation, and an upsurge of Muslim nationalism. All were capped by the advent of independence in 1947, but tempered by the partition of India into two states, India and Pakistan. Vital to India's self-image as an independent nation was its constitution, completed in 1950, which put in place a secular and democratic republic. It has remained a democracy with civil liberties, an active Supreme Court, and a largely independent press. Economic liberalization, which began in the 1990s, has created a large urban middle class, transformed India into one of the world's fastest-growing economies, and increased its geopolitical clout. Indian movies, music, and spiritual teachings play an increasing role in global culture. Yet, India is also shaped by seemingly unyielding poverty, both rural and urban, by religious and caste-related violence, by Maoist-inspired Naxalite insurgencies, and by separatism in Jammu and Kashmir and in northeast India. 
It has unresolved territorial disputes with China and with Pakistan. The India-Pakistan nuclear rivalry came to a head in 1998. India's sustained democratic freedoms are unique among the world's newer nations, however, in spite of its recent economic successes, freedom from want for its disadvantaged population remains a goal yet to be achieved. Geography India accounts for the bulk of the Indian subcontinent, lying atop the Indian tectonic plate, a part of the Indo-Australian plate. India's defining geological processes began 75 million years ago when the Indian plate, then part of the southern supercontinent Gondwana, began a northeastward drift caused by seafloor spreading to its southwest, and later, south and southeast. Simultaneously, the vast Tethian oceanic crust, to its northeast, began to subduct under the Eurasian plate. These dual processes, driven by convection in the Earth's mantle, both created the Indian Ocean and caused the Indian continental crust eventually to underthrust Eurasia and to uplift the Himalayas. Immediately south of the emerging Himalayas, plate movement created a vast trough that rapidly filled with river-borne sediment and now constitutes the Indo-Gangetic Plain. Cut off from the plain by the ancient Aravalli Range lies the Thar Desert. The original Indian plate survives as Peninsular India, the oldest and geologically most stable part of India. It extends as far north as the Sitpura and Vindhya ranges in central India. These parallel chains run from the Arabian Sea coast in Gujarat in the west to the coal-rich Chota Nagpur Plateau in Jharkhand in the east. To the south, the remaining peninsular landmass, the Deccan Plateau, is flanked on the west and east by coastal ranges known as the Western and Eastern Ghats. The plateau contains the country's oldest rock formations, some over one billion years old. Constituted in such fashion, India lies to the north of the equator between 6 degrees 44 and 35 degrees 30 north latitude and 68 degrees 7 and 97 degrees 25 east longitude. India's coastline measures 7,517 kilometers 4,700 miles in length, of this distance, 5,423 kilometers 3,400 miles belong to peninsular India and 2,094 kilometers 1,300 miles to the Andaman, Nicobar, and Lakshadweep island chains. According to the Indian Naval Hydrographic Charts, the mainland coastline consists of the following, 43% sandy beaches, 11% rocky shores, including cliffs, and 46% mudflats or marshy shores. Major Himalayan origin rivers that substantially flow through India include the Ganges and the Brahmaputra, both of which drain into the Bay of Bengal. Important tributaries of the Ganges include the Yamuna and the Kosi, the latter's extremely low gradient, caused by long-term silt deposition, leads to severe floods and course changes. Major peninsular rivers, whose steeper gradients prevent their waters from flooding, include the Godavari, the Mahanadi, the Kaveri, and the Krishna, which also drain into the Bay of Bengal, and the Narmada and the Tapti, which drain into the Arabian Sea. Coastal features include the marshy ran of Kutch of western India and the alluvial Sundarbans delta of eastern India, the latter is shared with Bangladesh. India has two archipelagos, the Lakshadweep, coral atolls off India's southwestern coast, and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, a volcanic chain in the Andaman Sea. The Indian climate is strongly influenced by the Himalayas and the Thar Desert, both of which drive the economically and culturally pivotal summer and winter monsoons. The Himalayas prevent cold Central Asian katabatic winds from blowing in, keeping the bulk of the Indian subcontinent warmer than most locations at similar latitudes. The Thar Desert plays a crucial role in attracting the moisture-laden southwest summer monsoon winds that, between June and October, provide the majority of India's rainfall. Four major climatic groupings predominate in India, tropical wet, tropical dry, subtropical humid, and montane. Biodiversity. India is a megadiverse country, a term employed for 17 countries that display high biological diversity and contain many species exclusively indigenous, or endemic, to them. India is a habitat for 8.6% of all mammal species, 13.7% of bird species, 7.9% of reptile species, 6% of amphibian species, 12.2% of fish species, and 6.0% of all flowering plant species. Fully a third of Indian plant species are endemic. India also contains four of the world's 34 biodiversity hotspots, or regions that display significant habitat loss in the presence of high endemism. 
India's forest cover is 701,673 square kilometers, 270,917 square miles, which is 21.35% of the country's total land area. It can be subdivided further into broad categories of canopy density, or the proportion of the area of a forest covered by its tree canopy. Very dense forest, whose canopy density is greater than 70%, occupies 2.61% of India's land area. It predominates in the tropical moist forest of the Andaman Islands, the Western Ghats, and Northeast India. Moderately dense forest, whose canopy density is between 40% and 70%, occupies 9.59% of India's land area. It predominates in the temperate coniferous forest of the Himalayas, the moist deciduous sal forest of eastern India, and the dry deciduous teak forest of central and southern India. Open forest, whose canopy density is between 10% and 40%, occupies 9.14% of India's land area and predominates in the Babul dominated thorn forest of the central Deccan Plateau and the western Gangetic Plain. Among the Indian subcontinent's notable indigenous trees are the astringent Azadaracta indica, or neem, which is widely used in rural Indian herbal medicine, and the luxuriant ficus religiosa, or people, which is displayed on the ancient seals of Mohenjo-daro, and under which the Buddha is recorded in the Pali Canon to have sought enlightenment. Many Indian species have descended from those of Gondwana, the southern supercontinent from which India separated more than 100 million years ago. India's subsequent collision with Eurasia set off a mass exchange of species. However, volcanism and climatic changes later caused the extinction of many endemic Indian forms. Still, later, mammals entered India from Asia through two zoogeographical passes flanking the Himalayas. This had the effect of lowering endemism among India's mammals, which stands at 12.6%, contrasting with 45.8% among reptiles and 55.8% among amphibians. Notable endemics are the vulnerable hooded leaf monkey and the threatened Badom's toad of the Western Ghats. India contains 172 IUCN designated threatened animal species or 2.9% of endangered forms. These include the endangered Bengal tiger and the Ganges river dolphin. Critically endangered species include the gharial, a crocodilian, the great Indian bustard, and the Indian white-rumped vulture, which has become nearly extinct by having ingested the carrion of diclofenac-treated cattle. The pervasive and ecologically devastating human encroachment of recent decades has critically endangered Indian wildlife. In response, the system of national parks and protected areas, first established in 1935, was expanded substantially. In 1972, India enacted the Wildlife Protection Act and Project Tiger to safeguard crucial wilderness, the Forest Conservation Act was enacted in 1980 and amendments added in 1988. India hosts more than 500 wildlife sanctuaries and 13 biosphere reserves, four of which are part of the World Network of Biosphere Reserves, 25 wetlands are registered under the Ramsar Convention. Politics. India is the world's most populous democracy. A parliamentary republic with a multi-party system, it has eight recognized national parties, including the Indian National Congress and the Bharatiya Janata Party BJP, and more than 40 regional parties. The Congress is considered center-left in Indian political culture, and the BJP right-wing. For most of the period between 1950, when India first became a republic, and the late 1980s, Congress held a majority in the parliament. Since then, however, it has increasingly shared the political stage with the BJP, as well as with powerful regional parties which have often forced the creation of multi-party coalition governments at the center. In the Republic of India's first three general elections, in 1951, 1957, and 1962, the Jawaharlal Nehru led Congress won easy victories. On Nehru's death in 1964, Lal Bahadur Shastri briefly became Prime Minister, he was succeeded, after his own unexpected death in 1966, by Indira Gandhi, who went on to lead the Congress to election victories in 1967 and 1971. Following public discontent with the state of emergency she declared in 1975, the Congress was voted out of power in 1977, the then new Janata Party, which had opposed the emergency, was voted in. Its government lasted just over two years. 
Voted back into power in 1980, the Congress saw a change in leadership in 1984, when Indira Gandhi was assassinated, she was succeeded by her son Rajiv Gandhi, who won an easy victory in the general elections later that year. The Congress was voted out again in 1989 when a National Front coalition, led by the newly formed Janata Dal in alliance with the Left Front, won the elections, that government too proved relatively short-lived, lasting just under two years. Elections were held again in 1991, no party won an absolute majority. The Congress, as the largest single party, was able to form a minority government led by P. V. Narasimha Rao. Manmohan Singh became the Prime Minister since Jawaharlal Nehru in 1957 and 1962 to be re-elected to a consecutive five-year term. In the 2014 general election, the BJP became the first political party since 1984 to win a majority and govern without the support of other parties. The incumbent Prime Minister is Narendra Modi, a former Chief Minister of Gujarat. On 20 July 2017, Ram Nath Kovind was elected India's 14th President and took the oath of office on 25 July 2017. Government India is a federation with a parliamentary system governed under the Constitution of India, the country's supreme legal document. It is a constitutional republic and representative democracy, in which, majority rule is tempered by minority rights protected by law. Federalism in India defines the power distribution between the union, or central, government and the states. The Constitution of India, which came into effect on 26 January 1950, originally stated India to be a sovereign, democratic republic, this characterization was amended in 1971 to a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. India's form of government, traditionally described as quasi-federal, with a strong center and weak states, has grown increasingly federal since the late 1990s as a result of political, economic, and social changes. The government of India comprises three branches. Executive, the President of India is the ceremonial head of state, who is elected indirectly for a five-year term by an electoral college comprising members of national and state legislatures. The Prime Minister of India is the head of government and exercises most executive power. Appointed by the President, the Prime Minister is by convention supported by the party or political alliance having a majority of seats in the lower house of parliament. The executive of the Indian government consists of the President, the Vice President, and the Union Council of Ministers, with the cabinet being its executive committee, headed by the Prime Minister. Any minister holding a portfolio must be a member of one of the Houses of Parliament. In the Indian parliamentary system, the executive is subordinate to the legislature, the prime minister and their council are directly responsible to the lower house of the parliament. Civil servants act as permanent executives and all decisions of the executive are implemented by them. Legislature, the legislature of India is the bicameral parliament. Operating under a Westminster-style parliamentary system, it comprises an upper house called the Rajya Sabha Council of States, and a lower house called the Lok Sabha House of the People. The Rajya Sabha is a permanent body of 245 members who serve staggered six-year terms. Most are elected indirectly by the state and union territorial legislatures in numbers proportional to their state's share of the national population. All but two of the Lok Sabha's 545 members are elected directly by popular vote, they represent single-member constituencies for five-year terms. The remaining two members are nominated by the President from among the Anglo-Indian community, in case the President decides they are not adequately represented. Judiciary, India has a three-tier unitary independent judiciary comprising the Supreme Court, headed by the Chief Justice of India, 24 high courts, and a large number of trial courts. The Supreme Court has original jurisdiction over cases involving fundamental rights and over disputes between states and the center and has appellate jurisdiction over the high courts. It has the power to both strike down union or state laws which contravene the constitution, and invalidate any government action it deems unconstitutional. National Symbols Flag, Taranga, Tricolor, Emblem, Sarnath Lion Capital Language, Hindi Anthem, Jana Gana Mana Song, Band Mataram Currency, Indian Rupee Calendar, Sakha National Animal, Tiger National Bird, Peacock Flower, Lotus Fruit, Mango Tree, Banyan River, Ganga, 
The economy of India, according to the International Monetary Fund IMF, the Indian economy in 2017 was nominally worth $2.6 trillion, it is the sixth largest economy by market exchange rates and is almost $10 trillion, the third largest by purchasing power parity, or PPP. With its average annual GDP growth rate of 5.8% over the past two decades, and reaching 6.1% during 2011-2012, India is one of the world's fastest growing economies. However, the country ranks 140th in the world in nominal GDP per capita and 129th in GDP per capita until 1991. All Indian governments followed protectionist policies that were influenced by socialist economics. Widespread state intervention and regulation largely walled the economy off from the outside world. An acute balance of payments crisis in 1991 forced the nation to liberalize its economy, since then it has moved slowly towards a free market system by emphasizing both foreign trade and direct investment inflows. India has been a member of WTO since 1 January 1995. The 513.7 million worker Indian labor force is the world's second largest, as of 2016. The service sector makes up 55.6% of GDP, the industrial sector 26.3% and the agricultural sector 18.1%. India's foreign exchange remittances of US 70 billion United States dollars in 2014, the largest in the world, were contributed to its economy by 25 million Indians working in foreign countries. Major agricultural products include rice, wheat, oilseed, cotton, jute, tea, sugarcane, and potatoes. Major industries include textiles, telecommunications, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, biotechnology, food processing, steel, transport equipment, cement, mining, petroleum, machinery, and software. In 2006, the share of external trade in India's GDP stood at 24%, up from 6% in 1985. In 2008, India's share of world trade was 1.68%. In 2011, India was the world's 10th largest importer and the 19th largest exporter. Major exports include petroleum products, textile goods, jewelry, software, engineering goods, chemicals, and manufactured leather goods. Major imports include crude oil, machinery, gems, fertilizer, and chemicals. Between 2001 and 2011, the contribution of petrochemical and engineering goods to total exports grew from 14% to 42%. India was the world's second-largest textile exporter after China in the 2013 calendar year. Averaging an economic growth rate of 7.5% for several years prior to 2007, India has more than doubled its hourly wage rates during the first decade of the 21st century. Some 431 million Indians have left poverty since 1985, India's middle classes are projected to number around 580 million by 2030. Though ranking 51st in global competitiveness, as of 2010, India ranks 17th in financial market sophistication, 24th in the banking sector, 44th in business sophistication, and 39th in innovation, ahead of several advanced economies. With seven of the world's top 15 information technology outsourcing companies based in India, as of 2009, the country is viewed as the second most favorable outsourcing destination after the United States. India's consumer market, the world's 11th largest, is expected to become fifth largest by 2030. However, barely 2% of Indians pay income taxes. Driven by growth, India's nominal GDP per capita increased steadily from US$329 in 1991, when economic liberalization began, to US$1,265 in 2010, to an estimated US$1,723 in 2016. It is expected to grow to US$2,358 by 2020. However, it has remained lower than those of other Asian developing countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Sri Lanka, and Thailand, and is expected to remain so in the near future. Its GDP per capita is higher than Pakistan, Nepal, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and others. 
According to the Worldwide Cost of Living Report 2017 released by the Economist Intelligence Unit EIU, which was created by comparing more than 400 individual prices across 160 products and services, four of the cheapest cities were in India, Bangalore, Mumbai, Chennai, and New Delhi. Industries in India India's telecommunication industry, the world's fastest growing, added 227 million subscribers during the period 2010-2011, and after the third quarter of 2017, India surpassed the US to become the second largest smartphone market in the world after China. The Indian automotive industry, the world's second fastest growing, increased domestic sales by 26% during 2009-2010, and exports by 36% during 2008-2009. India's capacity to generate electrical power is 300 gigawatts, of which 42 gigawatts is renewable. At the end of 2011, the Indian IT industry employed 2.8 million professionals, generated revenues close to 100 billion United States dollars equaling 7.5% of Indian GDP, and contributed 26% of India's merchandise exports. Demographics, languages, and religion in India, with 1,210,193,422 residents reported in the 2011 Provisional Census Report, India is the world's second most populous country. Its population grew by 17.64% from 2001 to 2011, compared to 21.54% growth in the previous decade 1991 to 2001. The human sex ratio, according to the 2011 census, is 940 females per 1,000 males. The median age was 27.6 as of 2016. The first post-colonial census, conducted in 1951, counted 361 million people. Medical advances made in the last 50 years as well as increased agricultural productivity brought about by the Green Revolution, have caused India's population to grow rapidly. According to the 2011 census, there are 53 million plus urban agglomerations in India, among them Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Ahmedabad, in decreasing order by population. The literacy rate in 2011 was 74.04%, 65.46% among females and 82.14% among males. The rural urban literacy gap, which was 21.2 percentage points in 2001, dropped to 16.1 percentage points in 2011. The improvement in the rural literacy rate is twice that of urban areas. Kerala is the most literate state with 93.91% literacy, while Bihar the least with 63.82%. India is home to two major language families, Indo-Aryan means Hindi, spoken by about 74% of the population, and Dravidian, spoken by 24% of the population. Other languages spoken in India come from the Austroasiatic and Sino-Tibetan language families. India has Hindi national language. Hindi, with the largest number of speakers, is the official language of the government. English is used extensively in business and administration and has the status of a subsidiary official language, it is important in education, especially as a medium of higher education. Each state and union territory has one or more official languages, and the constitution recognizes in particular 22 scheduled languages. Culture in India, Indian cultural history spans more than 4,500 years. During the Vedic period C. C. BCE, the foundations of Hindu philosophy, mythology, theology, and literature were laid, and many beliefs and practices still exist today, such as Dharma, Karma, Yoga, and Moksha, were established. India is notable for its religious diversity, with Hinduism, Buddhism, Sikhism, Islam, Christianity, and Jainism among the nation's major religions. The predominant religion, Hinduism, has been shaped by various historical schools of thought, including those of the Upanishads, the Yoga Sutras, the Bhakti movement, and by Buddhist philosophy, art, architecture, and literature. Much of Indian architecture, including the Taj Mahal, other works of Mughal architecture, and South Indian architecture, blends ancient local traditions with imported styles. Vernacular architecture is also regional in its flavors. 
Vastu Shastra, literally, science of construction, or architecture, and ascribed to Mamuni Mayan, explores how the laws of nature affect human dwellings, it employs precise geometry and directional alignments to reflect perceived cosmic constructs. As applied in Hindu temple architecture, it is influenced by the Shilpa Shastras, a series of foundational texts whose basic mythological form is the Vastu Purusha Mandala, a square that embodied the absolute. The Taj Mahal, built in Agra between 1631 and 1648 by orders of Emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his wife, has been described in the UNESCO World Heritage List as the jewel of Muslim art in India and one of the universally admired masterpieces of the world's heritage. In the 19th century, Indian writers took a new interest in social questions and psychological descriptions. In the 20th century, Indian literature was influenced by the works of the Bengali poet and novelist Rabindranath Tagore, who was a recipient of the Nobel Prize in Literature. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, click on like button. If you want to watch more videos like this, click on the subscription button below. It's free subscription.